The proximal convoluted tubule cells are adapted for reabsorption in three ways. Firstly, there's numerous mitochondria. Secondly, there's a large surface area due to the microvilli and basal channels. And thirdly, the blood capillaries are close. Over 80% of the glomerular filtrate is reabsorbed here, including all the glucose, amino acids, vitamins, hormones, and about 80% of the sodium chloride and water. Glucose, amino acids, and ions diffuse into the cells of the proximal convoluted tubule from the filtrate and are actively transported out of the cells into the spaces between them and the basal channels. This is done by carrier proteins in the cell surface membranes. Once in these spaces and channels, they enter the extreme permeable blood capillaries by diffusion and are carried away from the nephron. The constant removal of these substances from the proximal convoluted tubule cells creates a diffusion gradient between the filtrate in the proximal tubule and the cells, down which further substances pass. Once inside the cells, they are actively transported into the spaces and channels and the cycle continues. The outer membranes of the cells of the proximal convoluted tubule walls actively transport sodium ions out of the cytoplasm. The movement of sodium and other ions out of the nephron results in a higher water potential as the concentration of sodium ions is lowered. This forms a concentration gradient for sodium ions from the contents of the tubule, where there is a relatively high concentration, into the cytoplasm. The sodium ions diffuse down this gradient from the fluid inside the tubule into the cells, passing through transporter proteins in their plasma membranes. An equivalent amount of water leaves the tubular filtrate and passes into the blood capillaries by osmosis. Most of the solutes and water are removed from the filtrate at a fairly constant rate. There are several different varieties of these transporters and each one transports something else at the same time as sodium ions. They can even do this against a concentration gradient. For example, a sodium ion diffusing through one kind of transporter might carry a glucose molecule with it up the concentration gradient for glucose. This is called co-transport, meaning sodium and glucose. The passive movement of the sodium ion down its gradient provides the energy to move the glucose molecule up its gradient. So indirectly, the active transport of sodium ions out of one side of the cell provides the energy needed to transport glucose molecules into the other side. In this way, all of the glucose in the proximal convoluted tubule is reabsorbed into the blood. This is necessary because glucose is a useful substance that is needed by the body. Amino acids, vitamins, sodium ions, and chloride ions are also reabsorbed here. The removal of all these solutes from the filtrate greatly increases its water potential. But the water potential inside the cells in the nephron walls and inside the blood capillaries is decreasing as these solutes move into them. So, a water potential gradient builds up. Water molecules move down this gradient out of the nephron and into the blood. As the blood flows away, so does the water and other reabsorbed substances. Urea is a small molecule which passes easily through cell membranes. Its concentration in the filtrate is considerably higher than in the capillaries, so it diffuses passively through the wall of the proximal convoluted tubule and into the blood. Surprisingly, about 40 to 50 percent of the urea from the filtrate is reabsorbed by diffusion into the blood capillaries. Now this is quite a lot. Although the urea is not needed, it is harmless in this smaller concentration. The remainder, however, is excreted in the urine. Small proteins which pass into the tubule during ultrafiltration are removed at the base of the microvilli. Enzymes digest these proteins to amino acids which are either used by the tubule cells or passed on by diffusion to the blood capillaries. Finally, active secretion of unwanted substances such as creatinine and some urea occurs out of the blood capillaries in this region. These substances are transported from the tissue fluid bathing the tubules into the tubular filtrate and eventually removed in the urine. All of this reabsorption greatly decreases the volume of the remaining liquid in the tubule. In an adult kidney, about 125 cm3 of filtrate enters the proximal convoluted tubules each minute, and all but 45 cm3 is reabsorbed. So now that we know about proximal convoluted tubule, let's look at the loop of Henle.